Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So in my this particular video, I am going to discuss one very important concept related to machine learning point of view and that is PCA or Principal Component Analysis. Okay, so what is this? This is basically Dimensionality Reduction Technique, right? So before going to PCA, we need to understand what is Dimensionality Reduction, okay? So if you just consider our previous video discussion, we mostly have taken two input features or independent features and based on that we have tried to predict our output feature whether that is classification or clustering or regression problem, right? Because in two dimension, our brain, human brain can easily visualize that, right? But suppose we have huge dimensional data, maybe 50, 60, maybe 1000 uh, features, input features are present. That time it is impossible for us to visualize those data, right? And obviously, as you know, many algorithms like decision tree suffer from parts of dimensionality because as the number of features increases, there is huge computation internally has to be done to find each cuts for each uh, stage of decision in the tree formation, right? So to avoid all this, what we do, we basically reduce the number of dimensions, okay, present in our input data. How we can do that? There are simply two techniques present. One is feature selection, another one is feature extraction, okay? So what is feature selection? Feature selection is like what I have discussed during correlation, okay? We have tried to find out that each input feature, what is the correlation, that is each output feature, how much dependent on my input, individual input feature. And based on that, if we have seen that one particular input feature has very low correlation or dependency with output, okay, that time what we do, we might discard that feature. So this kind, there are several techniques uh, for selecting the important feature. So using that, we can reduce total number of input or explanatory variables, okay? And as a result, we can reduce the number of dimensions of my input data. This is called feature selection technique. Then there comes feature extraction technique. What is that? In this case, we convert our data using some transformation to some other space okay if you consider any data is nothing but if you just think with respect to applied linear algebra point of view any data is nothing but vector right so vector if you consider data in vector space so from one space using some transformation we can convert to some other space and in that space the most important features we extract okay so this comes under feature extraction okay Using some transformation, we do this. And this PCA, principal component analysis, comes under feature extraction, okay? That is, we are extracting some of the most important features present in our data set. It is not like that. We are simply discarding some of the features and uh, taking rest, okay? We are applying some transformation, converting my data to some other subspace, and then we are taking most important features from that subspace. That is called feature extraction technique in dimensionality reduction. Okay. So now before going to the actual explanation of PCA, let me just give you the feeling of dimensionality reduction. Okay. In MATLAB. So CLC clear all close all warning off. Suppose I am having one data set where there are two input feature, two dimensional data set. We can clearly understand minus 5, 2.5, 2, 2 minus 1. 10, minus 5, minus 12, 6. Each tuple is my data. Minus 5, 2.5 is one data. 2, minus 1, another data. 10, minus 5, another data like that. Now we are doing scatter plot of that. Let us first check the data once, okay? So if we just check the data, our data will look like this. We can clearly understand that there is a correlation present, right? Negative correlation, we can say, because as the x increases, y value decreases, right? This kind of uh, negative slope type time is present. Okay, correlation is present. Now, in this type of data, what we can do, let us try to reduce the number of dimension. That is, this is two-dimensional data. Let us try to represent the same data using one dimension, okay? So, if you have studied applied linear algebra, you can easily understand this. I am choosing one particular vector, okay, and that is 2 minus 1, sorry, 
2 minus 1, right? Now you just very carefully observe. If you just consider the first element of my D matrix, D of row 1, all element, which is minus 5, 2.5, right? And this is my M, okay? So what we can do, let us just run this M part, okay? Now what we can do, M multiplied by, carefully understand, M is 2 and minus 1. M multiplied by minus of 2.5 if we do one scalar we are multiplying see what value we are getting minus 5 2.5 which is basically first element of my d matrix that is this one right then check the next one see to get the second row 2 minus 1 uh, we can easily multiply 1 with m because m is 2 minus 1 only and we can get the second row element right then third row is 10 minus 5 so what we can multiply with m to get this third row see very simple if we multiply 5 see m is 2 minus 1 so 5 into 2 it will be 10 and 5 into minus 1 it will be minus 5 right so if we just run see we are getting third row then the last row minus 12 6 we have to get from m simply we can multiply by minus 6 right because m is 2 minus 1 so when you are multiplying by minus 6 minus 6 multiplied by 2 will be minus 12 and minus 6 multiplied by minus 1 the second element of m will result into 6 if i just run see minus 12 6 okay that is what i want to say using this particular vector this particular information if i have then using some particular scalar multiplication we can get this whole data set right and what is that that scalar values are basically, I can write new feature equal to minus of 2.5, 1, 5, minus 6. That's all. You just see, you multiply minus of 2.5 with m, this vector, you will be getting first element of d. You multiply 1 with m, you will be getting second element. You multiply 5 with m, you will be getting third element. You multiply minus 6 with m, you will be getting fourth element. Right? So now see, this two-dimensional data, we are explaining, completely, perfectly explaining using this one-dimensional data because these are individual scalars. So one-dimensional data, right? Minus 2.5, 1, 5, minus 6. This is what is nothing but dimensionality reduction. We have converted our data from two dimension to one dimension. And if we have the information of this particular uh, vector, we can generate all this data, right? So this is coming under dimensionality reduction. This is a simple intuition. Obviously, they are uh, highly complex mathematics works behind this algorithm. Okay, I am not going in, the, in that much depth of mathematics because uh, we are more focused towards the machine learning uh, requirement uh, part. Okay, so now once we have understood or got the feeling of dimensional reduction, let me go to explanation of PCA. Okay. So I am giving you the intuition again, mathematical intuition. So suppose uh, this is my data set in two dimension, okay? And now we want to reduce the dimension. So what we basically do here, this is in two dimension. We have to convert this data to one dimension, right? So one dimension means what? Line. And now this is in plane. So we have to get such line using which we can represent this whole two-dimensional data which is basically in one plane, right? So the key idea or basically we can say target of PCA is find one line which basically explains this particular data, high-dimensional data, okay? And intuitively you can understand that that line will be the best suited line for this particular use case on which if we map all these two dimensional data we will be getting maximum variance okay because maximum variance is nothing but maximum spread there is maximum information we will be getting right and that line is should be our target so i am explaining this again it might seem difficult but once i will show you the example it will be very simple so our idea will be such a line when we project our data on that line, we will be getting maximum variance, okay? So let us try with one by one. Suppose I am choosing one horizontal line and let us map or project all this data on this particular line. 
I will be getting this. So what is the variance? Variance is nothing but spread with respect to mean. So if you consider this data, our mean will be somewhat here and variance. So spread is like from this part to this part, right? So we can say A to B is my spread. Okay, fine. So variance is quite okay. Now let us try another possible line. Suppose uh, this time we have taken horizontal. Now let's take vertical line and let's project all the two dimensional data on this vertical line. We will be getting this. So basically spread will be from this part to this part, which is basically giving us the idea of variance. Right? We have seen two possible combinations. There are basically n number of possible combinations, infinite combinations. Okay, you just uh, start rotating your line and each time direction will change and the uh, direction you have to find out on which if you project you will be getting maximum variance right so now let us see one more case suppose i am taking one line which is this kind of 45 degree angle it is making direction is 45 degree angle like this and now if we project see we are getting variance from this part to this part right it seems it is quite huge compared to earlier two case if you just see see this range to this range is showing variance. So let's compare the scenarios. I'll be getting these three uh, different cases, right? Here in this horizontal line case, we, I am getting from here to here. Vertical line case, I am getting from here to here. And when I am taking uh, 45 degree direction of line, we are getting this variance. So see, in this particular line, if we project our data, it has maximum variance or spread, and it is basically uh, giving us maximum information okay after uh, mapping our data from two dimension to one dimension that is loss of data is not that much if we map this uh, data set on this particular lower dimensional line right so this is nothing but target of pca okay that is find a line or direction of line on which if you project your data you will be having maximum variance okay so this is just one component PCA principal component analysis so this is in lower dimension if you map what is the principal component which explains the data set maximum that is maximum variance we can say right so this is nothing but that component we can say right and then if you want to find the second principal component let me just draw that okay on this so what we can do second principal component can, should be in the perpendicular direction or orthogonal with respect to the first principal component so we can draw our second principal component like this which has variance from this range to this range okay kind of ellipse it will try to fit okay so this is the idea of fundamental idea of principal component analysis right so i hope you have understood how dimensionality reduction works, what is the intuition of PCA, that is find the direction of line which in lower dimension has maximum uh, importance, okay. Basically, we, we measure the importance like this after mapping on that particular line which is going to have maximum variance, okay. Maximum variance means maximum information we might get from that, maximum spread, okay. So this is what about theoretical intuition point of view. In my next video, I will be discussing the MATLAB implementation and Python implementation. Okay. Thank you for watching.